movies and uh, Jean Dujardin with The Artist has won all the Oscars. And people in France are still not um, taking advantage of that to, to, to build... Uh, all right, man, this bigger, can come in at any right. time. And uh, it's... So I think that there's something very short-minded over... I know, I guess, because, uh, trying something new. New is always good. I, I can dig new. watching T Radio V Radio in TV This week, TV Guide profiles an actress who wants to be like Marlon Brando. Meet Linda Lavin of Alice in TV Guide. If you like children, there's a child who'd like to know you. I'm Sarah Purcell, speaking for some great kids, now in the care of the Children's Bureau of Los Angeles. They need foster homes or adoptive parents, or just someone to take them to a movie. Kids of all races, ages 4 to 12. To find out more, call 384-2515. You can visit Santa in the wintertime, because right now he's at Santa's Village in the San Bernardino Mountains. Twelve big rides provide fun for the whole family. Visit the petting zoo. See Santa's reindeer. There's food and treats from the Pixie Pantry and the Good Witch's Bakery, and lots more. Santa's Village is fun, forest, and fantasy all rolled into one. Santa's Village in the colorful San Bernardino Mountains on Highway 18, just 30 minutes north of San Bernardino. Now open weekends and... Attention, moms and dads. Have your kids been doing this, turning their backs and refusing to talk till you take them to not? You may wonder why. My assistant will demonstrate. They have rides, fast, fun, exciting rides. Shows like Snoopy's all-new Ice Spectacular. And besides, now you get to see me there live. And Snoopy and Charlie Brown, too, of course. My advice? Take your kids to nuts or never see their faces again. Just seven ninety nine each. Dare, dare, dare to, dare to be, dare, dare to, dare to be, dare to be Tomorrow on the three thirty movie. Yeah, you gotta dare to be noticed. Miller's Outpost. I can't tell you. Um. Okay, so it was my birthday week, 
and uh, I was thinking back to all the things that uh, influenced my life. And I say that every year I got money for my birthday. Like by the time you get money, I don't know, maybe you're like 12 or something. Uh, all of my birthdays, I've spent all my money at Miller's Outpost buying clothes. And I have to say, probably almost all of those years, I bought myself a new bandana. So Miller's Outpost, I think it's their fault that this thing has been wrapped around my head for years. They were these uh, ridiculous uh, hillbillies that lived in California and they did the brashest things and somehow like always they'd punch some girl in the back of the head and like her titty would almost fall out you'd be like oh man I fucking love Miller's Outpost commercials but uh that never actually happened in the stores but it happened in the commercials in the stores and uh you know I loved me some Miller's Outpost also on there uh Knott's Berry Farm that was where I would always choose to go like hey what are you gonna do for your birthday I want to go to Knott's Berry Farm. When I think about it now, like, there isn't shit to do at Knott's Berry Farm. It's the worst fucking place. Um, but then I started thinking about the real worst place and that commercial at the beginning of that for uh, Santa's Village. You could go up and see Santa and eat at the Good Witch's Bakery. And I watch this terrible video now. It's this abandoned theme park here in Southern California, and it's sad. People have gone in there and written like swastikas on um, fairies' backs, and you're like, it's, it, it's, 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 it's very disturbing. But watching the videos, like, it reminds me when I was a kid going there, and, and it still sucked then, too. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that kids' time isn't still being wasted going through this cardboard cutout land that they put together. But it's still, it's sad that uh, people had to, you know, kind of shit all over it because it was a nice place for a little while. I don't know, Santa's Village, that's uh, what we had going on there. Um, oh, yeah, the opening of that show. I got to be up on the roof. Apparently, it cut out. I can't wait to go back and actually watch it and see uh, what it looks like because maybe I can find a way of getting high on the air. And uh, there's another sh thing they do here, too, where them smoking weed would probably be nice for them. So... You know, I don't think we talk about the other things that uh, happen in this room, you know. We just kind of decide that uh, it's good. We're going to let it slide on and pass. Please. <laughs> you know what? Maybe, actually, getting high wasn't a good idea because I'm fucking <laughs> rambling and ambling all over the place. I got a uh, soda, luckily. That'll help me. Hey, you know what? Actually, we got to go to a commercial break anyways. So you guys think we can go to our commercial break early? Then I can... Uh, you know, take a sip of this. Yeah, it's delicious. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. T Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy and Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor, and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is is that I played my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's it's got just, a great range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. All right, serious business okay, here. ready, guys? Serious yep. business. Radio voice, everybody. Okay, here we go. Let's just play. We should put music on and just dance for a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I have to stop and say one thing. I have to say two words. Hey, 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 hey. So join us and the rest of the T Radio V. Ready? Are we on? Give me some music. Watch this. Ready? Wait, are we rolling? No. Oh, is this real? Like, I was just totally is it kidding. Oh, let's start again. Start again. Say, say that. Okay, start again. Keep going. St I could do real jazz. <laughs> do jazz hands. Start that again. was a shtick. I was doing a shtick. Well, the hair is right. blonde, it's dye. Yeah, Just because you right. don't have any hair and he doesn't have any hair and I have all this fake right, start hair. Again. Start again, start again. Fine. How's the hair and the I feel like I'm in a puzzle. <laughs> any show you can have, I can have better. Any show you can have, I can have better. Are we filming all this? Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> this is the good stuff. You're short and you know it.
I know it was a lot of hodgepodge, but that's good, right? Yeah, hodgepodge is good intro. to cut. Let's do the intro one more time. So Menopause. I'm Zoe Williams. And I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown. And we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on TRadioV.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh. And if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? He <laughs> back there mumbling. To them. To them. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Tomorrow on the 330 movie, Richard Boone as a blind man who attempts the perfect crime. Wife cheating on her blind husband with his lawyer, his best friend. No court in this country had turned that divorce down. You know where you are? You're a miserable, selfish, sick. In Broad Daylight stars Richard Boone, Stella Stevens, and Suzanne Plachette. Tomorrow want to tell everyone, and especially you parents, that Knott's Berry Farm is giving a free ticket to each kid 11 and under who comes with a paying parent. So come to Knott's and see America's favorite vehicle, and don't miss Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. Travel back in time to when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Free admission for kids, February 11th through the 20th. Celebration of our birthday. Honestly, George. Would I lie? George! Breakfast! I'm hungry! Take it from Carinkles, that's me. The best breakfast under the big top is post sugar rice Carinkles. So crinkly, so delicious, so different. Each grain of rice in sugar rice Carinkles is Carinkled with honey and sugar. It's so good, I crinkle every time I eat it. Yep, no matter what other rice cereal you've ever tried, you'll love post-sugar rice crinkles best of all. Honey and sugar make it different and wonderful. A circus of fun to eat, so you crinkle on down to the store for post-sugar rice crinkles, the greatest cereal treat on earth. All righty, all. Hey, this is Jake Belch. We're back here on Grand Theft Audio on T Radio V. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, so today has been an odd day. It's been an odd day. I, uh, you know, I woke up and I put these commercials together. Things that reminded me of my youth. And my idea was to kind of creep out my guest. You know, I had coming on um, Jasmine Saint Clair. Uh, she is a world record holder. You know, I'm not going to say what she held the record in, but she is a world record holder. And um, this is going to be incredible. But then she didn't show up. So now I have these weird commercials playing on the show. And no guest who was able to make it here on time. Luckily, in the amount of time I spent here, uh, I've met some people who are close enough and can bail me out when I'm in a bad situation. And I've been blessed to have one of the uh, strongest co comic minds that I know. And someone who is uh, on a huge upswing in their universe that I couldn't be happier for. Uh, he is a host here on T-Radio V. He's moving his show to a new platform called Z Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, a guy who's helped me out almost more than anybody in Hollywood. Mr. Jason Stewart. Hey, I'm glad I, I live in the neighborhood, so. Well, where this show is being uh, taped, so that's lucky enough I was here. It was lucky on my part. Um, I was actually sure. here today doing my show, Absolutely Jason Stewart, on at 1 o'clock on Wednesday. Sure, you had a great guest on today. I had Wendy Liebman. So a couple weeks ago, I had Rob Schneider. It's been really cool. This uh, is, it brings in a lot of big name guests for a I lot try. Of I, I mainly pick people that I, as you know, c uh, who work for me. I mean, who worked with me. You sure. used to work for me. Yes, I, I mean, did. <laughs> ah, um, people who I've worked with or people who I've known that are friends. Rarely do I have anybody on that I don't know. That's why I usually go to my 
phone book and I call phone book. There's no such thing as a phone book anymore. I go to the computer and I look up the people who I just, you know, want to talk to and people that I've worked with or people that I've worked with recently. You know, like I just met Ernie yeah, Hudson. A, yeah, I mean, the amount of people you've worked with just recently. I mean, you've had, you've had a, a very successful uh, career before this recent upswing, but your recent uh, group of people you're working with is the who's who of who's making things happen in Hollywood right well, now. Well, I've been really lucky. I've been really blessed. I, you're talking about Birth of a Nation, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, and Tangerine. Tangerine and Love is Strange. Sure. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a uh, really, I mean, when I think about it, I think, how did this happen? I want to tell other people so they can do it. I decided around seven years ago that I wanted to get off the road. I'd been doing nightclubs, headlining them for close to 20 years. And I figured I'd hit the top of that, you know, and social media changed everything. Dane Cook became the MySpace guy. And then we all went to Facebook and it, it became this different way of promoting a show. And I wasn't quite sure how to do it, honestly. And I realized that I, you know, wanted to go back to my acting roots and I'm still doing stand up. Uh, so I didn't end that completely. I just ended in a different phase of how it was going about doing it. And I started working and acting more. And I would act a couple times a year, but now I'm primarily acting and doing a show once a month in Palm Springs. I, I have a regular gig at the Purple Room. And right. I'll be on the, there March 26th with um, Gloria Bigelow this time from Last Comic Standing mm -hmm. is going to be on. And then the next month on the 23rd, I have Helen Hong opening oh, for me. Great. So these are not really openers. These are special guests. Mm -hmm. And then I just got Dana Eagle for June right. and I've got uh, Ada Rodriguez for May and every month I'm just going in there and having a great time but I decided to act more and then I got Love is Strange I had met Ira Sachs at the Outfest 15 years ago and I had loved his work I loved Keep the Lights On I loved The Delta I loved a lot of his films and uh, I'm not sure your friends your fans out there and friends are uh, indie pe people but I love some of these indie films and he was doing a film called Love is Strange, and I knew the producer, one of the producers, Jim Landy, and I worked with him on a film called Bear City that he produced. And I ca called him and I said, hey, is there anything for me in this movie? He sent me the script. I picked out a couple of roles. I said what I'd like to read for. They asked me to read for two. I put myself on tape, and I got it. And I was uh, very surprised, honestly, when the email came, we'd like to offer you the role as, you know, that's a nice email to get. Oh, yeah. I was like looking at it like, is that really it? <laughs> you know? And I got to do that. That film went to Sundance. It starred John Lithgow, uh, Alfred Molina. I was going to say Fred because if anybody knows that Alfred Molina, if, they, if you don't call him Fred, he, he says, if somebody calls me Alfred, you know they don't know me. But it's Alfred Molina. That's how he's, he's built. And Marissa Tomei and all these great Broadway actors. And I only had one scene, but it was just heaven. I had this three-page scene where I had to uh, marry John and uh, Fred together, their characters, and it, and it was so weird because I everywhere I looked, Oscar, Emmy, Tony, everybody. <laughs> sure, award. Award, award winners all around the I room. I mean, yeah, uh, John Lithgow's been nominated for two uh, Oscars, and he has a couple Emmys, and Marissa Tomei Impressive has an Oscar. Sure. She's sitting right over here, you know, and then next is Fred Molina, and he's an award Winner for Spirit, all these awards, and the, uh, Cheyenne Jackson was their Tony nominee, and uh, Harriet um, Harris, who's a Tony winner for Thor and the Modern. It's a lot of awards, and I'm like, oh sure. god, I was nominated for the Glitter Award <laughs> for Best Supporting Actor. I didn't even win. <laughs> you know, well, you know, it's just an honor to be nominated. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> uh, so I I did this film, and yeah. and it brought me to Sundance for the first sure. time, and we all went. We had a great time, and it was so neat to be a part of a film that everybody actually liked. And it's such a beautiful movie about these two gay guys getting married later in life and how difficult it is when uh, to you know, keep an apartment in New York and this whole idea of when a neighborhood gets gentrified. And that's the word, right? Gentrified. Gentrified, Gentrified, yes. yeah. And it's so interesting. And uh, I, I got to be a, a small part of it. And then the next year, I get a call from uh, Sean Baker. And I had guest starred on a show called War and the Ape. And these little straight boys here must have known who War and the Ape is. And, and Greg the Bunny. Yeah. Well, this guy, Sean Baker. Very funny. That's the straight boys who are the tech the guys. This guy. Um, they got a lot of tech guys. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> be nice. Um, th these guys um, had done these, uh, these films. But he also done uh, Prince of Broadway mm -hmm. and Takeout, which 
And I, when I looked him up after I got the show, and I played a sort of Bernie Madoff character, I talk like this, and I played this guy that shared a sock, uh, a cell with a sock puppet. I'm not kidding. It's my first sock puppet to person acting. And I'm doing this, and I'm thinking, you know, who's this guy? And I look him up, uh, you know, because that's be before we, it was like three or four years ago when you just first started looking people up on IMDb. And I said, oh my God, he's done a couple, Prince of Broadway is one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my God, I want to work with this guy. So after I did the thing, we got along really well. And I tried to t you know, take him to lunch, go out for a coffee with him, keep in touch with him. Never would do anything with him. He was always really polite, Sean Baker. And then one day I got a call from his producer and said, hey, would you like to be in this movie? They want you to play this sort of manager, body you know, uh, bouncer of this uh, Hamburger Mary's. And I said, yeah, I'm in. When do you want me? Sure. And then they kept changing the date because they, they couldn't get the Hamburger Mary people to agree to have us film in front of it and then I get there and they say they're shooting this on an iPhone yeah what was your initial reaction to that this movie has picked up a lot of press because it was shot I think completely on an now, iPhone it, com five. yeah two, iPhone diff five. two different iPhones yeah and they used this pole like a, a pole for a mop and it had this thing on it and with an extra lens and then the uh, uh, DP who's just brilliant you know, because uh, I thought no, you know, no but one's going to. When, when you get that information, this is going to be shot. I thought on this was crazy. Sure. And I thought, okay, well, no one's going to hear me, and no one's going to see me. So if you notice in the thing, I'm I'm throwing my voice. You know, this this one doesn't have a shoe, and I'm finding a way to yell, and you know, so I make sure because it, I'm we're on Santa Monica Boulevard. So are you thinking that like it's shot on an iPhone, so you're going to be like a really small, like an iPhone screen? So you're no, no, so I'm big. thinking that no one's going to hear me or mm -hmm. see me, and then the camera's going, and it's really real, and I'm with these two transgender gals who've never acted, who I one of them I knew mm -hmm. from the Gay and Lesbian Center because I'd mentored kids there, and she was so sweet, saying, "Hey, you know, because I come out really early and." how I made an impression upon her. And the other one I had met once or twice hanging out there. So I sort of knew them. And then Mickey O'Hara, uh, oh, no, sorry, Mickey O'Hagan, who played the other gal, D Dinah, was this wonderful actress who, I, until I met her later after the shoot, I thought she was this sort of street girl, but she's not at all. And sh brilliant. And if there's, an, sh she deserves to have a wonderful, wonderful career. She hasn't got as much press as the other two. And when I saw the movie at Sundance, second time at Sundance in a row, I was completely blown away because the movie's funny. It's fast moving. You know what's really cool about the movie is it's, it, it's the sound design and the music and the way it's shot and edited. This is a real director's movie, but it's so funny and so fast. But I've never seen someone put sound design and music together in such a way that gives you this... Fast, 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 fast paced kind of mm -hmm. film. Have you seen the film? Uh, I've, I've seen d chunks of it. Yes. Um, but I have not watched There's the entire There's no flying entire things entire in it. There's a, other than the people, there's a flying. Sure. Thing. And they're very animated girls. Like. Oh, man. And they're funny. One of them just won Best Supporting Actress at the Spirit Awards. Crazy. It was nominated for Best Picture. It was nominated for Best Director and Best Actress. One of them was nominated against Kate you know, uh, Blanchett for Carol. Crazy. I mean, and Brie Larson. I mean, man. Wow. You know. Imp impressive company. Oh, yeah. As you see, that's the second time uh, in a row for some dance. But then the third time. Correct. Oh, man. So the third time, I'm, uh, I've been, which you know, because you were working in for me at the time. Correct. He was working as my assistant and helped me do PR and stuff. Am I allowed to say that on the Sure. Air? And um, i got to stand up straight so I look good. Um, <laughs> I just don't. I'm looking at myself. I gotta hey, we got to turn that mic a little bit more your direction. This way? Okay. Oh, that's much better. Much better. So I'm, I'm been auditioning. I had gotten an agent in New Orleans. And uh, when I started going back to really pursuing an acting career in a bigger way, I decided to get agents all over the country. So I had one in Florida. I had one in St. Louis, I remember. I had very one smart in idea. Atlanta. But I wasn't getting very many auditions. And all of a sudden, this one in New Orleans really started to send me stuff. So I went with her exclusively for the Southwest. And I get this audition one night, as, and I'm on the way. It's funny. It's, tomorrow night I'm doing that same gig again in Ventura at, at the uh, Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. I'll be there tomorrow night, which is, the, uh, which is Thursday, the um, 11th, or the 10th, rather, October 10th, uh, October, um, March 10th. And tonight I'm at this thing called the Motor City Club. Um, Where's the Motor City Club? I don't know. It's the 9th. But... Um, What's really cool is you can go to jasonstewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T, and it will tell you everything. But um, 
so I'm going to this gig, and I remember it. I called you. And you didn't answer the phone. That sounds like me. And then I texted you, and then you called me, and uh, I said, hey, can you get there an hour early? I got this audition. I got to get it to them by noon. You know, can you get there a little early? So we read it over. I seemed to get it. You know, we did it, and we just played. And you, I remember you said, no, that's great. And Because I, I remember you saying, because I think, are you sure I'm right for this? You said, no, you did great. Yep. And I remember you telling me that almost immediately, because usually there's something, because we had done a number of them together. And you'd say, do it this way. Do it. You didn't say very much to me at this one. You, and I was like, and I remembered that, you know, when I was thinking about it. I don't know if you remember, but I remember. I do that. remember. It. But you said, no, no, what you did was great. And I said, you sure? Because I play a guy that talks like this. It's hard times. The small farm is like you and my I actually think I remember my specific notes because I'm one of those people who remembers things. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't really matter that much right now. Oh, do you remember? I, I do. What did you say? Okay, this is, this, this is what I, I thought you said. No, this, this was, is what I remember saying. I remember saying, um, okay. You're you're a very sensitive person, and you didn't want to say these. Oh, the words. N word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I counseled you a little bit. You said, "Hey, hey, hey, man, you have to like look at them like they're your luggage. Like they're not people to you. So like, you right? Have, I know. I remember yeah, that. I tried getting you into like. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that because yeah. I think I hesitated a little right before. Yeah, yeah. Because I was a little. I I don't think I'd ever said the N word. I mean, not with what, not with the uh, intensity. That's right. Maybe I, I, I can't even remember ever saying it, honestly. Mm -hmm. out loud. But I guess maybe saying it if I repeated someone's saying something when Michael Richards did it. But I still don't think I ever said it. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I was in the hotel room in Savannah doing the movie and I'm practicing the N word over and over and over again. And I get a knock at the door. You know, it's the maid, you know, more towels. <laughs> I said, no, no. She's what's all that noise in there? So it's these Republicans. They won't shut up. <laughs> I still hear someone. Oh, it's Donald sure. Trump. He's got diarrhea. Hilarious. You know, so um, I I did put, sent my audition in, and then nothing. That was it. You know, and I wait a week later. I got a call. They want me to fly there. I flew to Savannah. I got to the audition three hours early, so I went to have lunch, and I'm walking to my car in the parking lot to go over my scene again, and I see this guy in the parking lot, and he says, hey, I, I know you. And I thought, man, I have a van in the middle of the savannah parking lot you know it, sure crazy. It, it wasn't even savannah it was like it was like encino of it you know <laughs> like yeah. a, it was like a half an hour out of you know savannah it was like far the boonies yeah it was really it was just this strip mall with this really big parking lot and he said no no he said i'm nate parker i'm the director and he talked to me and he's handsome and it had this incredible charisma and all of a sudden i went <sighs> And I just relaxed. Relax mm -hmm. I thought, I met him, I'm in. You know, and then I went in and read, and he said, thank you. And then he said, do it again. He said, this guy's funny. He thinks he's funny. Can you do that? I said, nightclub comic, 20 years, mm -hmm. I can do this. So I did it. He said, thank you very much. I said, thanks. I think this is a great project. You know, good luck to you. And that was it. I went home, and I had my beard that was probably a little like this. And I went home, and, and then I got a call on the phone from my New Orleans agent's the assistant this in the office and she says hi how's your day going and i thought well it's going fine and he says she says well it's about to get a little better i said why she says you got the part and i said and i said in my own stupid way what part because mm -hmm. i didn't think it was this mm -hmm. one you know i thought it'd been one of the others that sure. i had auditioned because it was like a, literally a day or two later and she says the plantation owner i said don't kid me megan are you serious and she says, yeah. And I just started to cry. I just completely lost it. And then I found out later, because Roger Denver Smith, who plays Isaiah, the house, one of the house uh, um, slaves, mm -hmm. uh, he is a friend of mine because we had done another film together called Dirty uh, around two years ago now. So we, I'm trying to get him on this show, my show, to do it. And I, and I had, before I went to the uh, callback and flew there on my own dime, I sent him my audition tape. I said, hey, can you put a word in with the director? Because I'd seen on IMDb, there were three big stars. It was Army Hammer, Nate, and um, Asian Naomi King from How to Get Away with Murder. Mm -hmm. And then there were three other actors, Coleman Domingo, uh, Mike Green, I think it was, and, and Roger, Denver Smith. And I thought, hmm, these are sort of well-known character actors. They must know Nate. You know me. Mm -hmm. I, my, my wheels sure. are turning. And then I called Roger and I said, hey, you know, can you put a word in me? And I sent my audition tape to him. And he said, if, I said, if you don't think it's any good, don't worry. And he, 
And he looked at it and he called me and he says, yeah, I talked to him. We didn't say much. Just go in and have a good time. And I thought, that's not going to help, you know. And then when I got the part, I sent him an email and I said, thanks for putting in a word in. I got the part. And he said in his own way, he said, oh, shit, man. He said, you had the part from the audition. They just wanted to see you read and mm-hmm. see if you could take direction and that kind of stuff. You were their first choice. And I thought, oh, and then I started to cry again because I thought, this is like one of the first times that I, I got, I've gotten a major role in something where it's about my work, not about anything else, not about my true. success as a comedian or as my success in any of the other things that I've done. And later I found out that Nate it really does his due diligence. And he, he looked me up, believe me, and everything. And, and I think that my activism and maybe a little part of the way I am, maybe I'm being too egotistical now, but I think that may have influenced him because this is a man of integrity, you know, and a man who had a vision. And I was part of his vision that he's working on for seven years. What are the odds that, you know, a, a, a Jewish gay liberal guy is going to get to play a white heterosexual Christian plantation owner in 1831? Who does some pretty her- terrible things in the film. Yes, we're not going to talk you about know? it because we don't give away any spoiler alert. You're right. And, uh, and you know what? The thing is, you know everything. You know what it's done for you inside now. Like the, the uh, amount of, of pride that you, that you get to burst with now, you know. The thing is. This journey has is barely even started. Well, I'll like tell you, next year, you, this movie is going to be at the Academy Awards. That's what they say. Yeah, it's going to be there. Like, there's no, there's, there's nothing I would. Uh, you never know. You, know, you do you know. know but, like, but he already of, he just won an award this week. Sure, but this for breakthrough be director for at, this, some, at the in this Vegas for thing. best picture, and it's going to be that one. They're like, oh man, that's going to win. Wow, I, and it's going to happen just to be associated with that. Yeah, man. You know, and what was really interesting too. And maybe these guys, I don't know if, you know if any of these guys are actors, but uh, sometimes people are. I read the script once, and I never read it again. And I never told anybody this. But the reason I didn't is because what it's about black abolitionist Nat Turner. And what happened was so horrific, mm-hmm. you know, with the rebellion. And, and my character is a part of the rebellion. Mm-hmm. I caused part of it. And... I guess it was so much in my head that I never read it again. And I thought I, I worked on this script on all my seven or eight scenes, all on this guy who's a plantation owner. He's trying to mentor a younger one, which is Army Hammer. And I'm trying to show him the way and trying to, you know, get my women and get my uh, booze and take my bath on Saturday night and just and just just get get my farm going again. You know, make sure it's happening because my slaves are completely um you know, acting crazy because I'm not feeding them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Apparently, I don't realize that not sure. feeding people. I remember the lines, man. Oh. Like, I, I'm, I remember that part of that scene. Oh, yeah. It's, it, sure. it's, it's hard times and small farmers like you and myself breaking yeah. even is hard enough, but getting ahead is impossible. Now, to save someone, I'll cut them back to a meal a day per head. Now, when I read that, I went, oh, man. Yeah, that's terrible. You know? It's like, it's like cattle, you know? It's, yeah. I mean, I thought, I can't do this. So when I saw the film, I know he gave you the thing, but when I saw the film, I was mortified. I completely <laughs> forgot what my character did. In the oh, movie really? Because I was so obsessed with getting my part right that I was—I sort of forgot that I caused all this. A terrible person. So when I saw yeah. myself in the context of yeah. the movie, yeah. I thought, "Oh my God, my part really is a part of the plot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm in." Well, uh, I'm very excited for you, man, and um, I know the hard work that's gone into it. Oh man, and, yeah. Uh, very proud of you. Um, so, uh, congratulations and good job. Yes. Uh, we're going to go to our commercial break. Uh, we're going to come back on the other side and keep it really light. We're going to talk about all the holidays we're supposed to be uh, celebrating. So um, stick around, learn about these other fine T Radio V shows, and we'll see you in two minutes. You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV. Hey, my fellow thoughters out there, I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say, but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a Thought, starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio... In TV. Hi. 
Hi, I'm Rob Hubel from Welcome to the Jungle. You're watching T-Radio V, aren't you? Radio on TV. Terrible idea. In TV. You shut up. <laughs> Use that one. <laughs> Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Hi, I'm Plastic Martyr, and I've got a new show called Just Like You on T Radio V. It's an inside look into my Hollywood life where I give you a sneak peek into a world of beauty, fashion, and fame. Illusions will be shattered. And of course, there's a little sex hugs and rock and roll. Be sure to check it out Wednesdays at 11, only on T Radio V. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Shower to shower adds baking soda to the finest talc to bring you the first deodorant body powder that helps neutralize odor. Shower to shower. Shower to shower each day helps keep odor away. Did you shower to shower today? Tomorrow on the 3.30 movie, Richard Boone as a blind man who attempts the perfect crime. Wife cheating on her blind husband with his lawyer, his best friend. No court in this country had turned that divorce down. You know where you are? You're a miserable, selfish, sick. In Broad Daylight stars Richard Boone, Stella Stevens, and Suzanne Flechette. Tomorrow... You ran from home and you're on the street. You've been ripped off, you've been used, and you could be killed. There is a way out. There is a way off the street, not tomorrow, but now. Runaway Hotline will get you off the street. Call Runaway Hotline, toll free, anytime, day or night. Runaway Hotline gets your message to those who care. Call now and get off the street. Yeah, if you're on the streets and you need to uh, get off them, rewind this podcast and go back and watch and get that number. I think it was active in about 1983, but it would be irresponsible of them to um, let it go out of business. So hopefully they can still help you if you're on the streets. We're back on Grand Theft Audio. This is Jake Belcher in the studio. I have my guest, Mr. Jason Stewart. Hello. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. All right. So uh, on Grand Theft Audio, we like to talk about holidays, things that we're supposed to be celebrating. There's uh, all these things that uh, get passed all the time that are like, oh, they're, uh, they're holidays and uh, they're, they're national observances. So March has a couple of them. This is Optimism Month. Oh. Yeah, Optimism Month is I nice. need it. Sure. Oh, I'm Jewish. I always think of everything as half full. You gotta have. My it. father was in the Holocaust. My bro- my mother was poor Brooklyn trash. I'm, you know, I'm just like poor, poor, poor. So believe me, I was brought up with everything is not going to work out. You know, no matter what happens, don't be happy. Don't let your head get too big. That sounds terrible. But I'm glad that you have optimism. Yes, to, uh, I charge do. forward into oh, the I world. I do. I do. How else? You got. You got to have it, man. Like if you don't, who, then who you made nothing. up this? Who's in charge? I think that Reagan actually made that one happen. Reagan? Yeah. It must I mean, have been I Nancy. Mean, uh, possibly. I mean, yeah. possibly. Hey, look, man. I heard a terrible story about her today about how she was like a blowjob queen. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm going to research it, and we're going to have that uh, truth. On the air next week. Oh, wait, I, nobody wants to know that. Yeah, I, I, dude, I want to know that, man. Because I stood really close to her on stage once. Like, um, I was used in the national propaganda war of uh, Just Say No. I Honey, was, you have been used in everything for five minutes. Yeah, I know, man. Five, but, that's about what I get. What's this guy's name? Um, Drew. Drew, he's very yeah. cute. You should do your, do your show with your shirt off. That would be better. 
That's his show. I don't care. It's your show. What, what, now, do you point out Drew on your show? Never. How come? My show's mature. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, what else we got? This is National Kite Month. When was the last time you flew a kite? Um, I think it was the 1970s. That long ago? Oh, my God, yeah. yeah I, I think Mary to... Tyler Moore was on the air. Well, I uh, got to fly one uh, about two years ago. I was taking care of, you know, all those jobs I've had. I was you taking, really? I mean, there, I, 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 I was taking care of an I, autistic kid who loved to fly kites. Uh, <laughs> so, like, that was my job. A more that was obscure. My, I know. So, can I just make up something that you used to do and just say that you probably did it? Probably. Oh. I mean, I can were find you some a, correlation. Were, were you a catwalker? Um, I've worked people on a catwalk. You see? I've worked near a catwalk. Of course. Okay, we got some weeklies. This is also National uh, Procrastination Week. Oh, God. Yeah. That's, that uh, would have been last week for me. Um, oh, I, I was um, trying so hard. I want to celebrate it, but I just don't have it together to do it. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it's a complete drag. Uh, this is also World um, Rattlesnake Roundup. This week we're supposed to um, – Don't tell me you ever had a job r- r- rounding up r- That's one job I couldn't do, man, like snakes and um, – snakes? So you were spiders. hired. You just couldn't do it. No, I, I – You that turned that one, one down. I'd have to give that the big old thumbs down. So we found a job I didn't do. Oh, my God. It only took 30 seconds. Yes. Congratulations. It's also International Listening Weekend. God. What's your favorite thing to listen to? Oh, God. I love music from like the 30s and 40s. Mm-hmm. I love all that. I love the jazz blues. I just like like Billie Holiday or uh, God. And even if you go towards the 60s, you know, Dinah Washington and, and little Nina Simone. And I don't know. I just love all that. That sounds very cultured and relaxing. You know? Well, it's also very deep and heavy. You sure. know, I just love all that kind of music. And I love early Streisand from the early 60s. You know, some of those albums when she would sing. Uh, you know, when the sun comes up. This is like the exact opposite of what I like to listen to. I know. I like to listen to people argue and talk shit. So all that, I, I listen to a lot of Patrice O'Neill on different radio shows. I listen to a lot of David Cross. And, uh, I, listen to I a love lot of, David Cross. I, l- I listen to a lot of long-form comedy conversations. Oh. That's probably what I well, you would have loved my more. show today with Wendy Liebman. Yeah, she's she a, was great. A master of it. Well, you can watch that. It'll be on uh, the archives. I'm assuming it's on. Is it on now? It's on now. I've had uh, her on my show three or four times over the eight years that I've been doing it. Yeah, so. we did it when I had my show at your network. That, that's correct. We had her on there. I also had um, uh, Rob Schneider on a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. And what you a get com- some, some big people. What man. a comedy mind. So you, I'm sitting here. I, okay, so I've worked for you and with you in many different capacities. Oh, yeah. Three or four so, different things. Um, you were my boss once. Sure. You were my boss. You work for me. You work with me. Yeah. I produced the shows here from the other side of the glass. And when I was doing that, you had this wonderful lady in. You know, um, I'm sitting here and listening to her her story. She's a, a writer. I'm like, oh, this is all really interesting. And I'm like, oh, that's really neat. And I'm sitting at home and I'm watching the Emmys. And like then she goes oh. up there and, and she won that week. I'm like, wow. Jane Anderson. I'm like, that's crazy. Who wrote all its Kittridge. That's yes, crazy. One of my favorite and one of my favorite plays. So yeah, I love that stuff. Oh, that's it. Yeah, she was here, and she was the writer and producer of all of Kittredge. All right, let's work through some other holidays. Oh, okay, come on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, This is uh, Get Over It Day. I love that. Let's get over it. Let's get over it. I like that. Uh, Sadly, it's also Panic Day. So, like, whichever way you are, you're like... Well, if you're panicking, then you can get over it all on the same day. you got to face the panic and just get over it. Yes. Okay, what else we got? We've also got um, tomorrow is Salvation Army Day. It was, so, it was crazy. Oh, is, don't, don't you love getting rid of shit? Oh, oh yeah, you sure. probably don't because you're a collector. No, I, I you have a whole room full of Barbies. I at don't home. anymore. I uh, I don't no, anymore. I, no. I, my world is so sparse. No, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe. What it did you? Did your in. wife make you do it? No. Who did? I guess life. You got rid of stuff, dude. You don't even know. You don't even know how much I got rid of. Like, I'm shocked. Yeah, I, I, I was close to hoarders. I was close. Are you still living in the same place? No. I oh, you moved. Yeah. So I got. Oh, so you place. had to get rid of stuff. I had to get rid of stuff. Okay, what else we got? We've got a uh, Johnny Appleseed Day. I, I love the idea of Johnny Appleseed going around and planting uh, apple seeds all over the place and making apple trees grow. Uh, apples, I think, are my favorite. Well, that fruit. could be annoying. That could be annoying. Yeah. I, okay, here's I, a tree. Are you, all of a sudden, it's in your yard. I use Johnny Appleseed as an inspiration. I went around Mexico um, planting uh, cannabis seeds everywhere. Was this one I, of your part-time jobs? No, this <laughs> is just something I did to be a dick. I oh. decided that I was going to be uh, Jakey Weedy Seed. And I'm just going to plant uh, marijuana all over Mexico. So that's Why not near your house? So you I'm not going to say when that happened, but I, I definitely <laughs> did that. Uh, what else do we have? Was uh, there jail involved? Uh, there there should have been. Uh, also, uh, this week we have World Plumbing Day. Thank God for plumbing. 
Like, thank God we have something to get rid of our poops. Like, um, if you watch uh, any society that has no reasonable oh, way to get rid of their poops, serious. yeah, it's, it's really serious bad. because what it does is it causes disease. Yeah, in country India, they have a terrible, terrible. You know, it, it is people will just defecate in places, and it's just it's a part of their culture. India, like they just walk out to the street. Well, not and everywhere, it, but it is a part of some of their culture. In, in, a, in, in it's a, beyond yucko, is what I'm going to say. Oh, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's uh, sick. Uh, this is also a Girl Scout week. I'm sure that... Well, um, they did that at the Oscars, you know. I thought it was one of the funniest things. He <laughs> I thought it was a ripoff of the Ellen thing, but... What isn't a ripoff of something? That was a, that was, it, was, it was a ripoff and then of Letterman, it. And she was a ripoff of things Letterman At least did. this was done for like right? a, a good uh, cause. This is also... This week also has L. Ron Hubbard Day. We yeah. celebrate the birth of L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, look yeah. him up, and um, if they offer a personality test, take it. I mean, what do you have to lose? Like, you should... Totally do How that. many times have you done the personality test? Uh, I've done it enough times that um, it doesn't. I, I don't want to get into any problems with them. I, I, they are fine people. Yeah, because they will come. Yeah, <laughs> you're fine people. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Uh, we also got uh, smart and sexy day. That's a that's a great combination. That's me. Yeah, that's a good combination. Excuse me, boys. Calm down. Okay, so so when you're looking at the three, daddy's of them, which, here and I which have one candy. Looks the smartest. Well, the, um, the, I think it's Drew because Drew's looking at me like, you know, he wants a little daddy. He needs a daddy. I see a pork choppian look there. And I have some candy. And Your that's my new album. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You do have this that year, available. Last year, my new album, it's uh, available on uh, jasonstewart.com on CD Baby and iTunes. Okay, let me get through another couple more of these, man. Um, something that you, I know you used to celebrate, but you are a, re- a body is my temple person. Potato chip day. I love potato chips. If you have to like uh, cheat, what potato chip will you go for? Oh, God. You know what's really great is the, is the real potato chips where you can actually taste them. Okay, what do you but like? I like, I you like can taste the potato? Yeah. Mm. I love that. Now, that's my least favorite part of it is the potato. Oh, but they're, they're I like the, the Scudders, saltiness. Laura Scott. La, it was so a you, crunch. I, I like the Or Ruffles. I, I Ruffles have ridges. Uh, I don't think they do. I think that Ruffles, yeah, they do have ridges. It's um, doom, 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 boom, the, the ones you want you pop, you can't stop. Um, oh, I don't like those. They taste terrible. Those are mashed potato chips. There's something where they, they taste Pringles. like Pringles. It's like cardboard with salt. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much yucky. Uh, this is also um, National Shoe the World Day, like where we're supposed to um, make sure people have shoes. You know how many people don't oh. have shoes? I mean, we're talking about the idea of I like. Know. Poop and um, shoes and basic things <laughs> that we take for beyond gra- for beyond granted, you know. Well, that's there's, what's great about no, America. There's no, yeah, there's nobody in America who is that poor that they don't have shoes, a place to poop and shoes. Well, that that's not they, true. And they find a place to poop, man. Like um, probably, but I know, but I, shoes. There are people that you know. There are some. There are some people. I mean, we okay. We, okay, how about there's nobody like that um, who isn't crazy? Okay. Okay, because yeah, uh, well, I will agree to that. Okay, I, I will go with that one. Um, yeah, we got to wrap this all up. Uh, what else do we got going on here? We have pie day because we have it's oh, I love be, pie. Yeah, what's your favorite type of pie? Oh, god, strawberry, strawberry pie. Yeah, I wouldn't even think of that as or like a blue- pie variety or blueberries. I like blueberries, so Berry. like a fruit pie. Yeah, I do like fruit pie, fruit pie, but real fruit pie. And when you get them fresh, god, that's really like too much. I don't know if I've ever had like a, a real. Really? Yeah, I'm not the way you're like. I, I imagine you're talking about it. <laughs> I have a. It's not a guy. It's, it's <laughs> I, uh, oh, it's not. Then I then no. I definitely. And I'm only haven't. gay on the weekends, so that's my new tour. I can't be gay every day. Where can people learn more about your new tour and your uh, the dates? JasonStewart.com. S-T-U- How do you spell that? S T U A R T. And the first part. Jason. JasonStewart.com. It's it's a regular Jason, right? It's not some special no, spelling. Just, just, just J A S O N. Jason. 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 Who do you have on? Oh your... look, look! Whoa, man! Isn't that cool? How did you do that? It's like press magic one of the buttons. Here. Press the appearance page. Okay, sure. Let's see what happens there. No, no, the appearance page. This was, was like the nine on it. Oh, so tonight I'm at the wild. The wild fiffle. Yes, and I'm doing a show called. With Jackie Minahan, it's called um, Motor City, and then I'm tomorrow night at the Ventura. Oh, God, I love this. Yeah, buy like fifty tickets. Oh wow! Oh, oh, probably because the show's about to start, right? Are you, are you going to go directly from here to there, basically? Yes. Yeah. It starts. What time does it start? Eight thirty. 
Well, I'm all actually over my time now. Hey, I really, really, really appreciate you coming in here and doing oh, this. Oh, sure. Thank I was so in the area, much. and you seemed panicked um, yeah, yeah, when, when the know. porn star didn't come. Yeah, so I'm going to have to use all those commercials again for her because uh, I want to see how she reacts to those runaway times from when I figured she was about that age. Oh. <laughs> Evil. All right. Uh, hey, this is Grand Theft Audio. Uh, I'm Jake Belcher. I'm Jason Stewart. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, please stick around. Top of the hour, we got a whole brand new episode of Drum Smack. They got someone who um, kicks ass out of drums. I love drum smack. Okay. You are watching T-Radio Me, Radio and TV.